I'll probably say this at the beginning of every video, but the DAOs are one of the most exciting concepts of Web3. Uh, so let's look at what DAOs are and how they actually work and the different types of DAOs that you might not be familiar with. So what are DAOs? Again, we're going to break this down part by part. So DAO, the D being decentralized. So there's no hierarchy. There's no, uh, as any a normal corporation would be, where there's managers, middle managers, reports, uh, things like this. There's no necessarily direct, um, you know, you can't be a CEO of a DAO. Uh, it's completely autonomous. So that's the A, meaning that smart contracts and voting on the smart contracts automates different policies and different decisions. So again, we're not uh, holding anyone responsible for enacting things by allowing the community to vote on those uh, actions and in implementing them into smart contracts so that uh, we can operate in a trustless environment, but move into the direction together. And the O being organization. So this is the people-focused part of Web3. Well, we've talked about things like DeFi, where it's just more of a finance function, function of Web3. DAOs are how do we get people to use the power of Web3 to organize. And that's what pe um, the people part is, the most important part of DAOs. The people uniting on, one, a shared mission and goal. We talk about the different types of DAOs and the different shared missions and ways that people have decided to organize themselves. They normally have a, a shared treasury. So again, instead of having a, a, an accountant or an accounting team be the ones that decide on who gets rewarded and how, uh, DAO has a shared treasury uh, that is governed by a smart contract on delving out certain rewards and making decisions on funding. And we'll talk about how different DAO types organize themselves around those smart contracts and accepting and sending rewards. And there's voting. So governance is a major part of DAO. You can have an entire course on just governance alone. I'll probably say that about a lot of concepts here. But again, it's a uh, way where people can align on the shared mission and vote on which direction the DAO or organization should go to next. So let's look at the different types of DAOs. There's the protocol DAOs, service DAOs, grant DAOs, investment DAOs, and media DAOs. There's actually probably three or four other types of DAOs, uh, but these are some of the main ones that we can, will look like at today. And let's look at protocol DAOs first. So the DAO and a protocol DAO votes in the direction of a protocol. So each protocol has a different, or, you know, it's assigned of different rules and different policies. And the, the DAO of a protocol would be a group of people who are voting on uh, ways that the protocol can improve or change on either technically, functionally, or operationally. They do this through the governance tokens, which we just explained uh, in a an earlier lesson on how governance tokens directly tie to the types and influence that an individual has in the voting. Uh, to tokens can be earned by contribution. So whether you're contributing uh, through code, through funds, maybe if you're working with a um, you know, liquidity or DeFi protocol and you will receive tokens, again, that will be tied to your voting influence. And an example of this is the Uniswap DAO. So they have a Uni token uh, that is assigned as a governance token. And uh, for tying that to actually the actual token itself, you need to have individuals or the total amount of the holders who vote yes need to equal uh, 25,000 uni tokens before a yes vote can be happening. So again, if, if I'm a token holder and I have uh, a, a put it together a proposal and I've li listened that to the, released that to the DAO, I will need to have an, an amount of holders to who hold at least 25,000 uni for and the yes vote or a change to the protocol can be passed. Next, we'll look at service DAOs. And these provide some sort of a service or talent or, and sort of an agency model, maybe to other DAOs or just to other projects or protocols uh, that are looking for that service. Some members are rewarded in ERC tokens, uh, ERC20 tokens, which is all the type of tokens that we are talking about here um, in regards to directly being tied and aligned to the DAO's goals. So <clears throat> smart contracts actually define who gets rewarded based on that. 
So I'll give you an example of the Raid Guild. They have a Raid token um, that is used for uh, basically providing their services. So if I wanted to use Raid, uh, the Raid Guild for some of their services around design, development, or marketing, which they have teams aligned on those sorts of things, I would purchase a Raid token and, and that would be how I pay Raid Guild directly. And if I contribute to those uh, projects as a Raid member, I will receive a portion of those raid tokens um, based on the smart contracts that they're fine on those types of projects. Now we have grant DAOs. Grant DAOs are namely meant to fund projects and provide crowdfunding. So this could be kind of like a Kickstarter, uh, but in the world of crypto or blockchain. So members actually vote on the projects that would receive funding. So individuals could come into uh, a grant DAO's um, you know, website or page and propose different projects that they would like to have funding for. And members of that DAO can vote on which ones they feel are best aligned with the goals or missions of the DAO uh, to be funded for. And provide, projects are then rewarded in the native token of the grant DAO itself. So an example of this is Gitcoin. Um, that is aligned a mission is for funding open source public goods. And the public good could be just a Web3 service or protocol uh, that is again, free and open to the public uh, to provide some sort of good in regards to development or progressing Web3. And they use and fund this through the GTC, G, GTC token. Now we have investment DAOs. So again, it could be a, a sole investor in the world of of Web2 or traditional finance. But in investment DAOs, we essentially allow people to pool investments together uh, that would they maybe wouldn't necessarily be able to afford as individuals. So this is open to everyone. Um, so if you are able to stake or contribute funds to the DAO, in most cases, you are able to then become a member of the DAO. And this provides collective ownership. So not only are people investing together, they are collectively owning certain different assets um, and services uh, or certain items and that allows then members to vote on the direction on how they would like to use the purchase or investment. So an example of this is CityDAO. Uh, CityDAO's mission goal is to purchase plots of land. Uh, right now at least they have purchased plots of land in Wyoming, the state in the U.S. And the votes are uh, as far as DAO members vote on the activities of that land how to utilize the land, how um, and what activities need to be done on the land, and uh, also maybe acquiring more land in other areas. And lastly, we have media DAOs. So media DAOs are tiered to media and content creators. So in the world of Web2, um, you know, you get contributions as a content creator, maybe directly from the platform, uh, but this allows uh, if I'm tied to a media DAO, are members to contribute and as well as vote on the type of content that they want to see. And re the rewards within the DAO, again, governed by the smart contracts, remove the need for different for advertisers who are in the world of Web2 directly contributing um, or probably the you know main contributor for value uh, for content creators. And an example of this is Bankless DAO. Uh, where uh, contributors can not only, well, if they want to contribute articles, uh, get rewards directly uh, for their contributions to uh, the Bankless page, which is a content or media company, uh, but also they can vote on the type of content that they would like to see uh, within Bankless um, so that they can then learn from or even gain some value from itself. So those are DAOs. Again, there's many different types of DAOs. I would encourage you uh, to explore DAOs. It's a very exciting space. And you can actually get in directly involved in most DAOs by learning or acquiring tokens or contributing directly. So next time we'll talk about how we can take this knowledge that we have and build on our roadmap, depending on your if you're a developer or non-developer.